What's up, Parks Map peeps? I wanted to make sure that you got this. I found this on the internet and I thought it was amazing. And I wanted to make sure that as seventh graders that I teach on a daily basis, they come in and they don't really know why we have to do the keep switch flip method in order to divide fractions. We just know it's, a, it's what we do, it's a process. But what's the real explanation behind it? And I think that you're gonna like this. So when you divide one fraction by another, we gotta figure out why is it that we have to turn the second one upside down to multiply them. So let's do a question. This is what this person on the internet put down. I think it's fantastic. One half divided by three fourths. Uh, we know that we should turn the second fraction and take the reciprocal of it. It's a good vocab word right there. And we're gonna then multiply the two fractions together. Why is it that we have to do this? Well, here's the answer, okay? One half divided by three fourths. Fractions are just division, what they say, division sums. The numerator divided by the denominator. So they look like complex fractions. We've got one fraction as the numerator, one fraction as the denominator, and we're gonna divide them. So what we wanna do, check this out, is we want to get the denominator to equal one. How do we get the denominator to equal one? Because if we get the denominator to equal one, then whatever's left on top, that's going to be our answer, the numerator, because anything divided by one is gonna stay the same. So the only way to get your denominator to be one is to multiply by the reciprocal. As you can see in this slide, they've got, we're gonna multiply the numerator, numerator and the denominator by four thirds. And then we're gonna get an equivalent fraction. Um, what you look at, if you multiply the top, one times four is four, two times three is six, and the bottom gives us 12 over 12. Well, 12 over 12 just reduces down to one. We should know that, and they show that on the next slide. We end up getting four sixths as our answer because, well, anything over one is going to be the answer of the numerator. That's it. So four sixths over one equals four sixths, and obviously we can go ahead and we can reduce it. So as you can see on the last slide, look at the two methods and just see that you now know why we have to flip that second fraction when we try to divide fractions. We're just canceling out the denominator. That's it, I'm getting one.